God, in total adoration, to give you praise, Lord Jesus. For you are worthy of all praise, God. We want to shout out how awesome and wonderful you are, Lord. And we live for your glory, Lord God. That you would use us, Lord Jesus, to fulfill your destiny, God. We ask that you just permeate through the service, that you will settle our hearts, our minds, and prepare our spirits to receive you, God. We know you met us here, Lord Jesus, and for that we are so thankful. So we magnify you this day, Lord Jesus. So wherever you are, we welcome you to a life of faith, Christian church. And at this time, as we praise and worship the only, the only wise king, I invite you to sit, stand, lift your hands, just position your hearts to be in fellowship and worship with your God. Hallelujah, Jesus.
2002, it was the day after Thanksgiving, and uh, my sister and I, we were going out shopping. At that time, I had a three-year-old, and forever and a day, she wanted a toy. It was Chuck the Talking Dump Truck. And my sister and I set out at four o'clock in the morning, Black Friday, and uh, we were determined to find this truck. But as the day progressed, I began to feel something different going on. Now the day before that, I'll backtrack. I had been over at Gainesville High School playing full court basketball with my daughter who was a senior at that time. But things turned around that day that I went shopping. And as the day progressed, I began to feel something really weird happening in my body. It was almost like uh, the teacher on Charlie Brown. People were talking around me and it was almost like they were going wah, 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 wah. And so I told my sister, I said, Carolyn, I don't feel good. I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go home and maybe we can go back out a little later in the afternoon. 
Well, lo and behold, I went home. It was Brianna and I. And um, I didn't get to feeling any better. And so my sister called to check on me. And I told her, I said, Carolyn, something's going on. And so she said, okay, I, I, I'm going to um, send somebody to see about you. And she said, uh, let me speak to Brianna. I remember this part. And she, she, I later learned that she told Brianna that she was going to be sending somebody to the house and that they were going to be strangers, but it was going to be okay to open the door. And so I fast forward. Uh, paramedics get there. I get taken to the hospital. I spend nine days in the hospital um, to find out that I was diagnosed with congestive heart failure, cardiomyopathy. They said my heart was pumping at 15%. I stayed in the hospital. I got out the day before my birthday. And uh, when I was discharged, the doctor told me, I asked him, well, my mom asked him, said, well, what can we expect? And I overheard him tell my mama that a third percent gets better, a third gets worse, and a third stays the same. And I don't know where she's gonna fall. So I go home. Um, that was a lot to, to digest. And uh, I remember spending the first five months, I was going to doctors because they told me that I would have to undergo a heart transplant evaluation. So I go home and I go through all of this and I remember one particular day, my mom was putting me in the bathtub and my spirit was really low for some reason that day. But my mom put me in the tub and she looked at me and she said, Steph, she said, you can spend the rest of your life waiting to die or you can live. Hallelujah. And I remember screaming, I said, get out of here. Just get out of here. And I cried out that day. I just sobbed. But I got up the next day and something began to change. I started going to cardiac rehab. I went from a wheelchair to a walker, from a walker to a cane. But what happened was, in the midst of the most vital organ in my body, having some challenges, God was working something in me. And as I said earlier, I, don't, I may not look like what I've been through, but what I can say is that I'm glad I went through what I'm going through for who it took me to. Um, they told me that in 2002 that I, I, I had a, a year to live, that the mortality rate for the disease that I have had a one year mortality rate. Uh, emotionally, it was draining because in my mind, I knew that someone's life had to go in order for me to get a heart. So I had a problem with that. And so I prayed. And I remember praying and asking God, if, if it's your will, if you spare my life, I will get to know you and I will serve you for the rest of my life. And so over the years, God has unfolded the purpose for me. Every year brings something new, a new assignment, a new thing that he has called me to do. So I knew if he had taken me in 2002, I wouldn't have been able to do these things that would glorify him. So. I decided that with every ounce of my being, whatever I can do to, to help somebody, whatever I can do to share God's goodness, I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna do it wholeheartedly. Amen. And so I remember making this promise with God after I'd heard this song and it said, um, if I lost everything and I didn't have anything, and God, you were the only thing I still have everything because it's you, my everything. And so this morning, I wanted to share that song with you. It's a beautiful song, and I listen to it often because I don't ever want to forget that promise I made with him because it gives me strength, it gives me courage, it gives me motivation to continue this journey. Um, I, I thank you for this opportunity to share my story. Um, it's a lot more to it, but you know, with the time being of essence. Um, but he has been awesome. 
awesome. And it took him getting my attention through what I thought was a devastating situation, but he was working something for my good. Amen. relationship with him and what he wants us to do because I know that there's more to come and there's more to the story for both of us. He's our everything, amen. Everything that you may ever need the Lord is able, and he won't ever let you down. So we thank God for this opportunity at this time to give thanks unto the Lord and also an opportunity to bring those things to the Lord that might be issues in our lives, 
We know this is a time of Thanksgiving, but sometimes things still come up. And we need just to lay it down before the Lord. And those that are streaming, if you can just hold off with that breakfast or that phone call and just take a few minutes that we can just spend some time in the Lord's presence and give those things to Him. We call it our sermonic prayer. But before that time of bringing you up to the altar or just standing where you are, I'm going to um, read this psalm of so Thanksgiving in Psalms 100. And it says, Shout with joy to the Lord, all ye earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him, singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And his faithfulness continues to each generation. And if you would like at this time as we do our harmonic prayer, those that would like to come to the altar, you can. If you would like to stay near your seats, we just ask in respect to the Lord that you would stand as you put those things before the Lord today. Paul sang in prison. 
with his feet in stocks and his wrist in chains. Daniel prayed and gave thanks before his God. Jonah voiced his thanks while he was in the belly of the whale. And he said, I give you a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Christ, as we know, he praised God and he thanked God through everything that he went through, even to the point of going to the cross and dying for our sins. We too must learn to give thanks in all things. There is power in gratitude, saints. There's power in being thankful. Research shows that expressing gratitude and giving thanks is associated with a host of mental and physical benefits. Studies have shown that being thankful can improve your sleep, your mood, your immune system. Gratitude, being thankful, can also decrease depression, anxiety, difficulties with chronic pain, and even the risk of disease. Being thankful has the benefit of releasing oxytocin, a hormone that's connected to promoting health within our bodies. Physicians have noted when individuals are grateful and thankful, other physical symptoms or physical parts of our body are positively impacted, such as our inflammatory and immune responses, cortisol levels increase, lowers pulses and blood pressure, and even lowers blood sugar. This is proof that focusing on what we are thankful for has an internal value on the inside. It promotes health for us. Our brains naturally are designed for problem solving rather than being appreciative. So that's why we have to sometimes override it because sometimes in the morning when we awake, first thing we think about is all the things we gotta complete. But sometimes thanks isn't the first thing on our lips. So, or we pick up that cell phone or we start seeing who texts us or we texting somebody else. But we need to make sure that you are giving thanks to God because that's gonna keep you healthy. And now research is being done on what God has already told us. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Not only that he's good, but it's good for our bodies. And now research is showing what God has already said. The Bible is filled with commands that says, give thanks to God. We cannot adequately worship or praise God without being thankful, saints. You can't do it, and you're not thankful for something that he did. Has he done anything for you in your lifetime, this morning, today? A reason to praise him. That's a reason to praise him. That's a reason to honor him. Feeling and expressing appreciation is good for us. Like any wise father, God wants us to learn to be thankful for all the gifts he has given us. For every good and perfect gift comes from above and comes down from our Father that's in lights. And there's no variation or shadow of turning in him. And that's James 1, verse 17. It is in our best interest to be reminded that everything that we have is a gift. We didn't earn it. It's not because we were so good and we had so much talent and we're so smart, it's because God has given us great and wonderful benefits and he does it on a daily basis, amen? amen. So without that gratitude or being thankful, sometimes we can get big headed, y'all. We can think it's all about us and we don't need no help from nobody and we achieved everything that we have on our own. But we have to learn how to be grateful and be thankful in our hearts so we can keep a right relationship with God and with others. Because sometimes we need help from each other, saints. Sometimes we need that sister or brother that you can lean on at any time. And you have to be thankful for him, that husband or that wife or that sister, that brother, 
you got to be thankful for them also in your life. Yes. Giving thanks always reminds us of how much we do have. As human beings, we do tend to be kind of materialistic. We look at what we got a whole lot, and we tend to focus a lot of times on lack, what we don't have. You know, I wish I had that car, and I wish I had that four-bedroom house. I don't wish I had that. But we have to learn how to focus on our blessings rather than our wants. And we'll be happier, because, man, when you start complaining, it just brings you down, your whole spirit down, when you are always comparing yourself with someone else. The scriptures say that is not wise. You don't want to be the Joneses, honey. You just want to be what God wants you to be. And he'll give you much more than enough to make it through every situation that you have to deal with. So we have to begin and remember, make it a part of your day to thank God. Give him thanks. And it's going to help your perception to change. And you'll realize just how good God is. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 says, In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. You want to know what the will is? Some people say, I don't know what God wants from me. He wants some thanks. Okay? He wants you to honor him. We are to, um, not only for the things that we like, okay, but even for circumstances that we may not like, okay. When we purpose to thank God in everything, he allows us to come through those situations and those circumstances without bitterness, without the complaint, without the fear, without the worry. We can't be thankful and bitter at the same time. You're going to be one or the other. But I'd rather be thankful. We don't have to thank him for the bad that's happening to us, but we do have to thank him in the bad that's happening in our lives. He just wants us to be thankful for what he's done. We don't have to thank him for harm or harm that's come to us, but we do have to thank him for him giving us strength to endure every situation. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, His strength is made perfect through what? Our weakness, because His grace is what? It's sufficient, amen? It's sufficient for us. So we thank Him because we know that all things, y'all know these scriptures work too. For who? For those that that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. That's Romans 8, 28. All right? So all things are going to work together for good. We can have thankful hearts to God, even when we may not feel right in that struggle, in that circumstances that we have. We can grieve even and still be thankful for God putting people in our hearts and our lives that have been a blessing. So even when we have lost something, even when we have lost a loved one or something that meant a lot to us, God can show us even how to be thankful for those situations. Amen. We can be angry at sin, but come on, be thankful to God. Be angry for the wrong, but praise Him. Make that sacrifice of praise as it talks about in Hebrews 13, 15. Giving thanks to God keeps our heart, like I said, in right relationship. He, it keeps us from harmful emotions. That sadness, that depression, that anger, that bitterness, that robs us of our peace. So I want to just end by sharing some benefits, 12 benefits of being thankful. Okay, first one is that gratitude or thankfulness glorifies God. This alone should be a reason to thank him because he's our father which art in heaven and it's the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So I glow when we glorify him. It's not exalting ourselves, but we're exalting him, our father. So it helps us to understand that all our gifts and all our promises comes from above. It comes from him. 
from God. Gratitude helps us to see God. Thankfulness opens your spiritual eyes. There's a beautiful cycle in giving God thanks. The more we thank him, the more he seems to work it out for us, right? Even when you don't see it, he's working. Even when you don't feel it, he's working. All right? He never stops working it out for his people. He has perfect timing in every one of your situations. He has not forgotten you. He's not slow and he's not slack concerning any of his promises. God knows that when we are thankful, it puts us in the middle of his will. We often think that, oh, the will is something mystical. But he said, this is my will for you, that you would give thanks and give thanks in all your situations. Being thankful can bring you peace. Count your blessings, not cheap. As we're told in order to get rid of your worry that it keeps you up at night. But count your blessings. God has his hand in every situation that we go through. And he can supernaturally bring you the peace you want. So don't be anxious for anything but pray about everything. All right, and you will get God's attention, and he will be there to help you through. That's Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7. Gratitude draws you towards God. It's a magnitude of God's undeserved, our undeserved blessings and kindness in our lives. And you remember the story of the ten lepers, right? Jesus told them, go show yourself to the priest, and you're going to be made whole. But only one person came back. Only one leper came back to actually tell him, thank you. So, yes, we want God to work on our situations. Yes, we want him to deliver us. But after he does all of that, remember to give him what? Thanks. All right. Gratitude, it does bring contentment. He'll protect, he protects us from those things that the enemy has purposed to keep us down, because we can get distracted really easy by the things that we go through. But the scriptures in 1 Timothy 6, 6 to 8 says, godliness with contentment is great gain, all right? We brought nothing into this world, y'all, and I don't care how much gold and stuff you put in your grave, you can't take it with you, okay? Godliness with contentment is great gain. Thankfulness will deepen your faith. Keeping a record, we call it um, our book of remembrance. Keeping a record of what God has done for you, your blessings, how he's moved in your life. It's always good to write it down, jot it down what he's done. So when you go through that struggle, when you go through that issue, you can pull back that book and say, I remember when God brought me through. I don't know how I made it through, but God was there for me then, and he's gonna be for me now, okay? Same God back then, same God right now. He hasn't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not gonna change on you. If he brought you through before, he can bring you through again. Be thankful, because it does bring joy of realizing how good God has been to you. Psalms 126 says that uh, Hebrews even sang in exile. They gave thanks as they remembered how God had blessed them. The Lord has done great things for you, and we should be filled with joy. Gratitude and thankfulness does defy Satan's lies. As we know, Satan is what? A father of a lie. And the scheme that he used against Eve was to make her focus on that. All these trees, all these blessings, and then he say, but you can't eat on that tree. So sometime in our lives, even after all the blessings God has given us, all the things that he's turned for us, we'll focus on, well, I didn't get that. And that is a trick of the enemy. He wants you to focus on lack. He wants you to focus on what you don't have, so you're less thankful to God for what he has given you. So watch that trick, because he is a father of lies. 
Thankfulness does guard you against envy. Being envious of what somebody else has, want to be like the Joneses, it makes us know that God can take us far beyond anything else and anyone else. Gratitude helps us to live in the present. Be thankful for today because this is the last day you're going to see it. All right? Be thankful for now. All right? Yeah, we can worry about the future, but be thankful that he said, present today is an evil then you don't have to think about the other stuff that we need to be able to be thankful for the day we're in don't say i wish it was the weekend already it's friday y'all all right so be thankful for what he's given us he's given us a new day brand new mercies brand new blessings every day every day he gives us he daily loads us with all of his benefits so be happy to live in the present. Be happy that he's given you another day. Be thankful for that. Be grateful and thankful for your testimony. Acknowledge with to others what God has done for you. The scriptures say to exhort each other daily. Exhort one another. Tell somebody else what God has done so you can encourage their hearts. So give thanks unto the Lord. Proclaim his goodness. And let the whole world know what he's done. And that's Psalms 105.1. So I hope that these words of exhortation has been a blessing to you. Even as we prepare for the things that our youth and others will share regarding thankfulness. And right now we're going to have Jayla um, share the instrumental. Ms. Jayla, you ready? Give her a hand as she comes.
As we enter into the season of Thanksgiving, my sisters and I would like to share what we are thankful for. I am thankful for my house because I have a roof over my head. I am also thankful for my family because they provide for me. I am mostly thankful for God because he provides for me, he helps me get over hard times, and he is my Lord and Savior. I am thankful for my home because I have protection over my head. I am thankful for my gifts because God, my Savior, gave me my gift. I am thankful for my church because I can learn more about the Lord and the power of Jesus. I am thankful for my room because I have a bed to sleep in. I am thankful for my clothes because I have something to wear. Ms. Giselle, are you ready? Okay, come on, girl. Let's sh share what you are thankful for today. Come on and share with us. All right, we got some help, we got some backup, so you good. Joyful noise to rock of our salvation. 
Let us come before his presence in, with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with, with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the, of the earth. The strength of the hills is, all, is his also. The sea is his, and he made it. And his hands formed the dried land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Thank you, Mr. I'm going to have Miss Eva share. You ready, Miss Eva? Give her a hand as she comes. as I give thanks for, to the Lord. Um, so this year has been a very tough year for me. Uh, I'm already starting to cry, thanks. Uh, I have been in hospitals. I have been depressed and have anxiety. I've gotten multiple diagnoses, and it's really hard. But I learned not to have it keep the best of me. Um, I went to a Lives Youth Camp this year, and last year, but the camp was phenomenal. <laughs> um, I gave my life to the Lord once again. I got baptized once again. Um, and I just, I heard this song. It's called, I Thank God. Um, it's, a, it's a really long song, but it's a really good song. Um, oh, there go the waterworks. Okay, so um, I just, I want to thank God for everything. For the people in this church, for the people online, and for the people that don't even know me. I just appreciate them so much because they're here. It takes a lot to be here. Like, it takes a lot. And... I know it because I've had suicidal thoughts back in the past, and those are past thoughts now. I've just got to look towards the future and just pretend like they were never there, because they weren't. They were never there. And, and I just want to say that I thank God for my artistic abilities. I am very talented when it comes to art. I just, I say so myself. <laughs> and, um, I just, I'm trying to keep this short, but I just want, it's just overwhelming on how much I can give thanks for. Because you never know if tomorrow's promise. And seeing my family and seeing everybody else in this church grow up, even Gigi, Gigi's old now. <laughs> um, she's getting so old. And Harrison, too. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, what is happening? But um, I don't remember when you were in your mommy's tummy. But that's not the point. Um, <laughs> I just want to say that hell lost another one because I am free. And I, he will never have me again. The devil will never have me again. Again, I refuse to be his little puppet. I refuse to be anything. I am. I just refuse. It is my choice to be God's child. It is my choice to be taken by God's word and it is just just tell everybody about it. It's my choice not to be the devil's child. And I choose today, never, ever, to be his child ever again. Come on, thank God. Something to thank God for. 
got something to thank God for. Just lift your hands right now and just give him a thanks. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your loving kindness to your children, to your people, God. We honor you, God. You've been a great and awesome God. And we magnify you for the blessings of the Lord. They continue to make rich and it won't add sorrow. And we just thank you, God, so much for doing such wonderful things in the lives of our children, our babies, our youth, our teenagers, and them being able to share things to you, God, knowing that you are the source and above you there is not a lot. presentation from her group but we want to thank everyone that's online today streaming with us uh, know that you can always give at a Bible Faith CC if you'd like to give an offering today but definitely want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving and we're going to go ahead and have her share good morning good morning I'm Tiana Williams I'm going to read Psalms 136, and this is from the New American Standard Bible. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his loving kindness. 
is everlasting. To him who alone does great wonders, for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him who made the heavens with skill, for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him who spread out the earth above the waters, for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him who made the great lights, for his loving kindness is everlasting. The sun to rule by day, for his loving kindness is everlasting. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him who smote the Egyptians in their firstborn, for his loving kindness is everlasting. And brought Israel out from their midst, for his loving kindness is everlasting. And for a strong hand and an outstretched arm, for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder, for his loving kindness is everlasting. And made Israel pass through the midst of it, for his loving kindness is everlasting. But he, but he overthrew the Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea, for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him who led the people through the wilderness, for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him who smote the great kings, for his loving kindness is everlasting. And slew mighty kings, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Sihon, king of Amorites, for his loving kindness is everlasting. And Og, king of Bashan. For his loving kindness is everlasting, and gave the land as a heritage. For his loving kindness is everlasting, even a heritage to Israel for his servant. For his loving kindness is everlasting, who remembered us in our low estate. For his loving kindness is everlasting, and has rescued us from our adversaries. For his loving kindness is everlasting, who gives food to all flesh. For his loving kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the God of heaven, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Good morning. Good morning. This morning I'm going to share a um, special presentation from ladies of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated regarding prematurity awareness. Um, but first I just want to say I am thankful for planting of seeds. I'm thankful for our children. Amen. And what you all share with us today is evidence of what happens when you plant a seed and you provide what is necessary to make the ground fertile for growth. We may not see it in the moment, but everything that you all shared today shows proof that God is working and that the seeds are planted and they are growing. So today I want to share with you some of the disturbing facts about prematurity here in this country. Every year, more than 450,000 babies are born premature. That's one in 10 babies. Those numbers are worse for African-American mothers who their babies have a one in six chance of being born too soon. Babies born prematurely usually have less developed organs than full-term babies and are more likely to face serious health problems. Even the best care cannot always spare a premature baby from having disabilities such as cerebral palsy, mental retardation, developmental delays, chronic lung disease, or vision and hearing impairment. Prematurity can often to anyone, excuse me, prematurity can happen to anyone. We don't know why it happens in many cases, and that's why the March of Dimes is working so hard to fix this problem and to find answers. In response to the significant rise in premature births in the past three decades, the March of Dimes, a national voluntary health agency whose mission is to improve the health of babies by preventing birth defects and infant mortality, and Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, an international organization with chapters in over 850 communities in the United States and abroad, have joined forces in this international campaign to support research into the causes of premature birth and to educate the public and healthcare professionals about this escalating health problem. November is Prematurity Awareness Month, 
And November 17th, although it has passed, is World Prematurity Day. Zeta Phi Beta Sorority has been a proud national program partner with the March of Dimes for over 50 years through our National Storks Nest Program. And if you're not aware, you have a Storks Nest here in this community. See me afterwards for more information. So again, even though November 17th is Prematurity Awareness Observation, please be aware of this very important health issue and make yourselves and those you love aware every day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Victoria. And those that are online, you've heard the, um, those ratings. And we want to pray for those that may be with children now or thinking about children in the future, that God will touch and protect and keep you. Uh, that you won't have um, be a, a part of that rating of the premature babies, but you will be healthy and you'll be whole and all those things that are needed for your baby to be healthy and whole. And we also want to cover those that may not have a relationship with Christ today. We've talked about Thanksgiving. We've heard our children talk about Thanksgiving. Uh, we've heard wonderful testimonies of God's goodness. And maybe you don't have a relationship with God today. Well, this is your day. This is your time. And all you have to do is repeat after me and say, Lord, I repent of my sins. And I ask that you come into my life today. Forgive me from my wrongs and fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. And keep me until you come again. And Lord, I thank you for those that are not only here in the services, but those that are streaming with us. You see the other needs that they may have. We want to be thankful, but we know the enemy can cause us to focus on our lack, on what we don't have instead of what we do have. But Lord, I pray that you change that perception and cause them to thank you today for the blessings that always come into our lives, that you are a keeper, you are a preserver, you are a help. And I pray that the blessings continue to overtake in the lives of you people, in Jesus' name. And I pray today that you just have a blessed day and a wonderful Thanksgiving for those that are on our streaming. Take care and have a wonderful day.